At the start of the Second World War, two qualified geologists from Germany decided to escape the madness of the war in Europe, as well as the sadness of internment in a prisoner of war camp, by hiding out in the Nabob Desert near the Quasib Canyon. For two and a half years, Hermann Kron, Heno Martin and their dog, Otto, lived the life of primitive man, while considering the actions of civilised man. Against the background of the madness of war in Europe, devoid of interaction with other humans, and relying only on nature for survival, these two educated men discussed and tried to understand evolution. Here follows a summary of their thoughts on evolution, as contained in their book, The Sheltering Desert. Intelligence. The difference between living and non-living things is that all living organisms use their senses to generate feelings which the organism can judge as good or evil. The capacity to judge is regarded as intelligence. Conscience. Several species live and rely for survival on a group living together. To be able to be part of a group, the individual must learn to suppress his own desires and subordinate himself to a leader. This learning or education process is based on the creation of a strong sense of conscience in the individual so that the individual will always place the interests of the group above his own. Instinct versus learning. Instinct is automatically bound up with highly specialised organs so as to make certain that species utilise the specialised organs properly. Humans lack instinct due to their lack of specialised organs but we have developed the abilities of consciousness and understanding based on learning and language. Power. The fighting power of animals normally takes the form of inanimate matter, such as teeth, claws, hooves, and scales. Insects often have armor and strong mandibles of chitin, as well as glands filled with poison. The secret for survival lies in adaptability and not in power. Man's evolution. Almost all the organs in the human body show a striking absence of specialization. The only two exclusive specializations of the human body are the development of human eyes and the brain. Conclusions regarding man's evolution. Man is less subject to the narrow and exclusive adaptation to his environment than any other species of animal, including the apes. Man has retained his versatility, whereas most animals have lost theirs. Man is thus nearer to the original mammalian form than any other species of animal, including the apes. Because the development cannot work in reverse, man could only have developed from an unspecialised origin and could not have developed from anything resembling our present-day anthropoid ape. The possibility of human extinction. Man has specialised through evolution in consciousness and understanding. Only if these specialisations of the brain are restricted can man be in serious danger of extinction. Mass propaganda, advertising and technological inventions make the human sensory organs useless by distorting reality and so eliminate humans' capacity to judge. The biggest danger to man lies in the large social, economical and political organisations and systems which use the instruments of education and propaganda to suppress individual judgment. My own conclusions. It is true that because man has not specialised physically through evolution, man remains physically versatile. The well-known environmental consequences of the globalised capitalist industrial system are overpopulation, poverty, hunger and thirst, global warming and serious pollution. The cumulative consequences of these environmental changes are escalating in speed. Evolution is subject to the rate of generational change. The rate of environmental change and challenges has already surpassed the possible rate of human generational change. As such, humans can no longer rely on evolution to guarantee the survival of the human species. Humans that are locked into the global capitalist consumer system genuinely believe that scientists will find the technology to overcome environmental challenges. 
The belief in technology has led to the total specialisation of the human brain through technological education. However, it has been proven that the secret for survival lies in adaptability and not in technological power. I do believe that the human race has created its own doom as a consequence of global industrialised capitalist greed. The belief that it is the uneducated rural-based people of the third world that will suffer most and that the scientific technology of the developed world will guarantee the survival of its privileged citizens is probably totally wrong. For the highly specialised citizens of the developed world have lost their physical adaptability in favour of technology. Whereas the simple, rural, uneducated farmer still knows how to read the signs of the seasons and how to survive off the land with their so-called simple knowledge of weapons, animals, plants and insects. What can I know? What can I dream? What can I hope? What will the future bring? You shine through me, but will you see me through African sky blue? African thunderstorm, your soldiers march through the air. The African rain will fall and wash away all my tears. African falling rain, African falling rain, will you bless my life? Oh, will you bless my life? Oh, will you bless my life? Oh, will you bless my life? The warrior's now a worker, and his war is underground. With cordite in the darkness, he milks the bleeding veins of gold. When the smoking rock face murmurs, he always thinks of you. African sky blue, will you see him through?